Well, hello everybody and welcome to this video. This is a dedicated video for the Divine Counterpart Collective. Now, if you're watching this and you're wondering, is this for me? This video is for you if you were on the path to ascension or of ascension. This video is for you if you identify as a divine feminine or a divine masculine. This video is for you if you're wondering about your mission, about your soul purpose, about why you're here. I am a divine channeler. I am a medium as well. And my specialty is in assisting people with identifying with what their true purpose is and their mission is on this planet, helping you get into that soulful career, find soulful clients or soulmate clients, and helping you really feel fulfilled, living a fulfilled life. So the readings that I offer, the personal readings, are more than just readings. They are also coaching sessions. They are healing sessions all in one. So I'm really quite full for April. I have some emails to reply to. So if you have reached out about a personal reading and I haven't yet responded as of last week, uh, I will be responding in the next couple days and likely those slots will be taken and then I'll be booking into May. So that being said, come join us over on Patreon or having a ball over there. And I post additional content, extra content, early access content. And at some point soon, I will be doing a special live that will be for certain tiers. There's different tiers. So it will be for the third level tier. I can't remember what I named that tier, but it's specifically for those um, patrons who are at that level. But I also post videos, written messages, and um, written videos also. So uh, love letters from your masculine, etc. So if you're here, welcome in. If you're not sure if this is for you, just have a listen. And please share a like to the channel. Please subscribe to the channel. And let's get started. So I've been really called to use the Angel Tarot deck recently in the past few days. And I'm going to go ahead and begin with this in this reading as well. It's just, it's really calling to me for whatever reason. I don't think I need a reason. Um, and I'm going to be clarifying today with actually the Syrian Starseed deck. So using two very powerful decks here and we're going to be clarifying and identifying with the divine counterparts and really what is it that you need to hear at this time? What is it that you most need to hear? What is it, you, you know, what is it that you may be resisting? Because as divine truth, I'm not only here to speak of the things that are light and joyful and happy, but I'm also here to share, okay, this is how you heal your shadow. This is what you may be in denial about. So let's discover what you may be in denial about and let's go ahead and bring and shed some light into that situation. So let's go ahead and calling on the highest high and bringing in that energy to allow me to be a pure vessel of divine truth. Thankful for the assistance of my guides and my highest self and for the discernment to be able to know which messages are from pure source. Releasing the ego and just being this vessel of light and carrying the light to bring forth to all of you in this reading. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm also called to just identify and share with you guys, and a lot of you know this if you've been following me, but the Ho'oponopono prayer, it's a prayer of forgiveness. It's a Hawaiian forgiveness ritual. It's four lines and it's, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you, thank you. So we're gonna go ahead and you can just, write that down you can rewind and play again and listen and decide who is that for in your life is it for yourself is it for your parents is it for your counterpart you know soulmate or a divine masculine divine feminine who is that for okay my loves let's go ahead all right, so the overarching energy. We have an emotional message that wants to come through. So your person wants to come in with a message. It's like a confession is what I'm hearing. Page of Water is a page who carries with him or her a message that is related. It's heart-related matters. And so there's something here that, that does want to be revealed, and I do feel like it is the right time. And with this approaching new moon that we have in two days on the 12th, right today's the 10th i do feel like there is this energy like this overarching overextending energy of heart chakra opening 
And many of you will be feeling very compassionate, very empathetic, wanting to help, wanting to give, wanting to share, just wanting to be a part of something greater than yourself at this time, you know, wanting to be a part of a community. That's that's really standing out here with this new moon in Aries that's coming up on the 12th. The page of water is a very intuitive and inquisitive and curious person who is really coming or acting from or speaking from the heart, you know, versus the mind. Um, for some, this will indicate a new person. And I feel like this could be romantic, could be flirtatious. This is in the form of maybe a younger person or just a person who sort of has that inner child um, who is very apparent, right? Like the person who may hold down a nine to five job and then also, um, you know, ha is very adventurous on the side, is very playful on the side. Um, this could also just mean for some of you that your connection with your counterpart, your connection is going to be entering a new phase, a brand new phase, a brand new beginning um, is, is really being highlighted here. And intuit intuitive powers and psychic abilities for a lot of you have either come online more strongly or for some of you may be coming online for the first time. For some of you, I feel like there's two storylines that want to come through here because we also have the Eight of Swords. So for some of you, this is the card or the energy of someone who has trapped themselves, of someone who it's the illusion of I'm trapped, I can't get out, I can't go anywhere, um, I can't make a decision, and things are always going to be like this. Uh, it, it comes with a lack of self-worth and a lack of self-confidence and really being timid and afraid and fearful of taking forward action. So for some of you, you could be picking up on your person's energy. And for others of you, this is just your energy that's coming through. And you may have felt like you dealt with this energy. And so you're wondering, why is this coming up again? I've already dealt with this. I've already dealt with you. Why is there a need for me to see this again, feel this again, experience this again? So you may feel a bit disheartened. Just make sure that you tap into your intuition to ask yourself, why is this coming through? And, and what is this teaching me? What is this here to show me? What is this here to teach me? What can I let go of? And how can I basically take that blindfold off of myself you know open up the cage that i've trapped myself in to be able to see that there is a way out of the situation so for some of you feeling hopeless about a situation just understand that things are about to shift and change for the better but you have to be willing to trust that things will shift because it's a sword energy it's all about your mental space it's all about your mind it's all about the illusion of being trapped it's not really real it's an illusion but your ego your ego mind will tell you that it's real this is real i'm trapped we're trapped humanity's trapped everything's doomed sort of that doom and gloom mentality you for some of you you're picking up on the collective energy of this doom and gloom okay so we're deeper and deeper into the illusion, right? To the illusion of the matrix. The illusion, you know, that this was about a V. I'm not going to say the word. A V. You guys know what that word means. That this was just about this the whole time. When in reality, this was about, you know, new world order. And this was about seeing how many people were going to wake up versus to stay in this it really is. It's like, are you going to wake up and tap into your intuition? And are you going to stay in this mindset of, you know, I'm, I'm trapped. I can't get out. Humanity's trapped. We're doomed. Um, this is terrible. Um, you know, it's like freedom or compliance. And I have to be very careful with the words that I use and how I speak, but essentially humanity is at this turning point. And it's becoming very evident and very clear that there are diverging paths that people are choosing to take. Okay. <laughs> Starseed. This is the Fool card. This is the Fool card. And this is the beginning of the Starseed's journey or the Hero's journey right? You have to start somewhere. So 
this is that beginning energy that is very much the energy of like sort of like a newborn energy and and that really does flow beautifully hand in hand with Aries energy here that we're in you know the fool decides to take that leap of faith and trust that it's all going to work out regardless of what he can see or what she can see in front of him or her um <laughs> So this is, you know, the soul of Starseed you being birthed into this physical reality. This is like the activation stage. So many of us are being activated or have been activated as to our truth and who we are. Like, who are you beyond the mask? Who are you beyond the physical exterior? Who are you beyond the labels that you've been given, even male, female, you know, light, dark, um, blue eyes, brown eyes, etc. short, tall, whatever. It's like, who are we beyond all of those superficial labels? Okay. And this new life that's being birthed here represents the beginning of something. And you see here that you see the lotus, the crystalline, it's a crystal lotus. So the star seed is headed right for that crystalline lotus. And the lotus is being prepared to receive the, the coating of the star seed and the star seed containing those 13 strands of DNA and they're light encoded, crystalline encoded DNA. So it's 12 perfected strands of Christ consciousness and the 13th strand is the master. And the master is, a, the, the strand around which the other 12 rotate, okay? And this is a very, very, um, <laughs> this is such a potent time to be alive. It's such a potent time to identify as a light worker or as a star seed or as a twin flame. And, um, you know, the number zero representing the zero point energy field, there's just a lot of potential in this energy and in this card. It's like there's this sense of going back to the beginning and being able to sort of not being able to start over, so to speak, because we wouldn't want to lose the knowledge that we have, but being able to do things differently, being able to see things from a higher perspective. And so being able to create this, this heaven on earth understanding that we are the light, that we are the love that we've been seeking, that it's contained within us, you know, and the star seed card here coming out in this reading for the collective represents an ultimate trust in, in the divine, whatever the divine is representative for you. But it's about leaping forward and trusting that we are ready to move forward, that we are ready to be awakened, that we are awakening in, in, masses, even if it doesn't appear to be, even if it appears that many people are still sleeping. What's really fascinating to me is that many people think that they're awake, but they're actually still really sleeping. And, and that was me for a long time. I thought that I was awake. I was, you know, woke. And then I realized I was still very much asleep in my own life. And I was very much asleep in the world. And it really wasn't until last year that I really got hit. And I think so many of us can really identify with this, that you really, really woke up to what was actually going on, to the lies that we had been fed, to the misinformation, to the deception. I mean, the massive amounts of deception and to the fact that we have in essence been, we've been in prison, we've been enslaved on this planet and it's mental slavery. And so this is that, that freedom of the star seeds being you know, coming to earth in masses and being here at the specific time to, you know, for this mission that we are, we are currently in route, right? We are in route on that mission at this time that I'm speaking at this time that you're watching this reading. So there's, there is an energy of impulsivity with the full card and there is this energy of, you know, blind faith and having faith. Um, and knowing that there's a new experience that's about to unfold and knowing that, yes, you're a part of this great manifestation. So do you trust your soul's path, your soul's direction? And how are you trusting this, this blind leap into the unknown that humanity is taking and that you're taking as a guide for humanity? You know, what great adventure awaits you? And are you allowing yourself to jump, you know, head first, right? Or heart first, rather not head first, but heart first into this 
new cycle? Are you allowing yourself to really embrace this new cycle and embrace this new beginning that awaits humanity? Tell me more spirit about the Fool card. Interesting. Two pages. So there is definitely a curiosity that's coming through in this reading. There's also this energy of something being birthed, right? With the Fool card, the page, um, because you have page and then it you graduate to knight energy and then queen and king. So there's definitely this energy of... Um, beginning again, beginning anew. And because the Page of Swords is representative of the mind, just like the Eight of Swords, this speaks of some challenging information, so perhaps some delays, right? Or just like the inability to make a decision, the inability to um, follow plans. And sometimes because the Page of Swords is still a little inept, and a little kind of abrupt in the way they speak. Sometimes that energy can come through just a little bit, um, not nasty, but it can come through as like a know-it-all or egotistical. So there can be that like information delivered without tact. So that can definitely be the case. So this may represent a person in your life. Um, you know, the page is somebody who is beginning to awaken to the wonderment of spirit and the wonderment of this world, like the expansion of the mind, the expansion of the heart, um, in realizing that there's a greater purpose than that which they've been sold or that which they've been told, right, from the very beginning of their life. And they're realizing that they're in the process or the midst of this transformation. So there's this very transformative process that's taking place within all of us at this time. And the page or the seeker reaches searching, searching, searching for more and searching for this new adventure, this new experience, something that's going to assist him or her on her path to awakening. But there's still this energy of unpreparedness, right? They're not totally prepared for what is in front of them. And there is a sense of kind of like childlike innocence or wonder. So let's get a clarifier here for the Page of Swords. Tell me more about why are these pages showing up in this reading? The High Priestess wants to come out in pretty much all of my private readings lately and also in the collective readings. Right, High Priestess, page of, page of emotions, page of water, signaling the need to really trust your own intuition, trust your own self over everything and anyone else and everything else. And then the Ace of Pentacles, the brand new beginning in the physical world. So that's why these pages are here is they're you're being asked to step into that higher energy of trusting your intuition and trusting the path that you're on and trusting the guidance that you're receiving from your own self, right? Or from God himself, from the universe or from the cosmos, whatever you identify with, whatever aligns with your um, highest good and whatever aligns with your belief system. But also, you know, the aces and the pages indicate that there's a new journey, there's a new adventure, there's a new path. The inflow of abundance, yeah. The pentacles are all about abundance in the material world. A promising business venture, important documents or contracts. So this to me says that there, there's a lot of changes in the material world right now for the divine feminines and a lot of changes in the form of feminines you are now being asked and also tasked with creating businesses, with venturing off on your own, with breaking apart from karmic contracts or situations yourself and in different areas of your life, uh, moving. Like there's a move on the horizon for many feminines at this time, moving states, moving cities, moving locales, right? Um, or just that desire to move. It's a, this very like innate desire, like you know that you're supposed to be somewhere else. And it could just be that your time is up where you are and it's just time, it's time for a new adventure. You know, it's time to open that door. And um, there's no turning back from this energy. This is a very excitable energy and it's very palpable right now. I talk about it more over on Patreon. Yeah, wow, 10 of cups, ultimate, ultimate fulfillment, ultimate emotional fulfillment, right? And the 10 of cups is, is interesting because the 10 of cups comes through to let you know that this whole journey hasn't been for nothing, that this whole journey is, is leading you towards your heart's greatest desire. 
okay? And this is like nothing is being held back with a Ten of Cups. Everything is being put on display. You know, vulnerability is ripe. Um, optimism, joy, um, just the freedom to really express yourself, the freedom to be vulnerable, the freedom to be yourself and not worry about if someone else is going to accept you. It's sort of that that energy of my cup runneth over. Um, your life is filled with joy at this point. And this is where we're headed towards. This is why all the inquisitions, all the, the curiosity, all the, the new starts and the need to really trust yourself is coming through so, so strongly here. Understanding that you've created this through your own manifestation powers. This is, this is of your own creation, Divine Feminine. What's really interesting is the Five of Cups came through too with that shuffle. So there's some really interesting energy and cards coming out. And again, it's like a little chaotic and it seems like it's a little all over the place because there's a lot of messages that want to come through. And I'm going to begin, you know, channeling and different different styles of messages, different messages that want to come through, um, perhaps for the greater collective, because that's how I am continuing to evolve my services and my work and my mission. And so this is more of like a broader collective energy that's coming through here that will probably appeal to more people. This isn't just focused on the divine feminine, divine masculine, although I think that we have that within each of us. We all have that. It's contained within each of us. It's just a matter of if we choose in this lifetime to allow it to uh, really um, sort of identify itself, really, or show itself or reveal itself. The Five of Cups is, you know, it follows the Four of Cups. And the Five of Cups is sort of, it's like crying over spilled milk. And you see the three cups that are sort of lost in the ocean stream here and course she could just pick them up you know if they're broken she could put them back together there I mean the water is in the stream here she could fill them back up with water and then she has these two cups here and the two cups you know the three cups represent um, the three of cups is all about joy and, and merriment and dance and and friendship right so it's like she feels like that has been sacrificed like something has been lost in the process of her transformation and in the process of getting this ten of cups you may feel feminine like you've You've lost something. You've had to sacrifice something that was very important to you. And this could even be your connection to your masculine. So a lot of you may be grieving that relationship now, feeling that the finality, feeling like it's actually really over. Okay. And this is the emotional place that you might be in. Remember that emotions are just energy running through us. It's emotion, energy in motion. And so that can shift and that can change. But she's failing to notice that the two of cups is being offered right in front of her because her head is down. She's failing to see the beauty. She's failing to see that the 10 of cups is still an option. And it's not just the two of cups. There's eight more cups that are full that, that want to be revealed to her that want to show her, look, there's so much more than grief. There's so much more than this lost love. It's all is not lost. Um, but sometimes on this journey, we have to feel like we've lost everything, including our counterpart or soulmate or whatever, however you identify with that in order to move forward and to really become whole and, and really, yeah, whole within yourself without seeking for something outside of yourself. That's really where we're at on our journey right now. And it may feel really weird and uncomfortable to be in this place, but this is exactly where you're meant to be. But understand that right around the corner is the 10 of cups is this ultimate fulfillment. So let's get some clarity here. Spirit, can you have can we have some clarity for the five of cups here? Clarity for the five of cups. Three of wands. Yeah, failing to see the abundance, failing to see the the energy of your ship's coming in. This is another repetitive card that's coming through over and over recently. Um, you, there's patience that needs to be had right now because it may feel like you're not getting everything when you want it, but trust that it's coming in. It's on its way. So make long-term plans. It's not, this is not, I've said this so many times, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And so if you look at this as a sprint, you're going to feel like you failed. This is the, the, the card of, I feel like I failed but nothing is lost. Everything is actually gained. Everything is, everything is in divine order and everything is really 
unfolding perfectly. So let's look at the Ten of Cups. Clarification. Yep, the wheel. Wow, another page. So we've got three out of the four pages. Very interesting. Very interesting energy indeed. Page of Wands. This is a page who's like rip roaring, ready to go, ready to start his journey, ready to get on the road. Um, the fire dragon is assisting the page of wands here. There's a bit of mischievous energy, like a bit of kind of wanting to rock the boat, <laughs> um, which is coming out in some of you at this time, like really wanting to speak your mind and it might be at the dismay of your current partner or your family members or your friends or even your coworkers, but wanting to just speak your truth and not caring what people think. Um, this is a very confident energy, a very confident page. And um, it, there's definitely, definitely a little bit of bravado that comes through with the page of wands, a little bit of machismo, a little bit of ego. But um, it's, it's that ego and bravado that's going to allow you to embark on this new endeavor with the confidence that's necessary because the skill of a page isn't the skill of a knight or definitely not the skill of a king or a queen. So you, you need that confidence to sort of make up for the lack of experience. And the wheel coming in to signify that things are taint. This is positive, positive, positive news, positive changes on the on the rise, positive changes that are starting to occur or are already occurring. They're already occurring in these connections and situation subtly moving forward. So forward momentum, moving us out of this five of cups energy, moving us into abundance, moving us into this 10 of cups energy. So let's see, Spirit, can you tell us, tell us more about the next couple days leading up to this full, or sorry, new moon. Five of Cups again, interesting. It's really important that you look positively at the situation, feminines. This is definitely a message coming through really strongly for some of you who are drowning in despair and drowning in this idea of they're never coming back. This is over. It's finished. Because a lot, again, I've said this, but a lot of your masculines have told you it's over. I don't see us getting back together. Um, you should move on with your life. You know, you should you should be happy. And I'm not that person. I can't make you happy. That's all stemming from a lack of self-worth. So as the masculines work through that false veil of I'm not worthy, the feminine is having to face her own shadow of abandonment and rejection. So that can feel really true when it's happening. It can feel very, it can feel like it's authentic and real when your counterpart says that. It can feel extremely emotionally debilitating and heartbreaking. So I feel like a lot of feminines are feeling like, How do I keep the hope or the faith going when I'm the only one turning the wheel of faith, right? Like if I'm the only one in charge of this, how am I supposed to continue to move things forward when my counterpart doesn't even see who I am to him or what I am to her or whatever the case. So just because things aren't turning out yet the way you want them to doesn't mean that they're, it's always going to be that way. And it's important because our emotions tell us that, you know, something is permanent, but it's important to understand that nothing is permanent. No emotion is permanent. No situation is permanent. Wow, look at this. There's definitely an energy of wanting to walk away or needing to walk away or, or somebody walking away from something. Um, I feel like this could even just be walking away from your, your current or your, sorry, your former um, mental belief system. Um, this is really asking you to let go of the situation that you were in. Let go of this idea that it's so interesting. Let go of this idea that it's over. Let go of this idea that it can never be resurrected. Some of you are really sticking to this idea and it's creating this in your reality. So it's showing up in your reality as truth. 
this person is ready for greater experiences. Like he's taken all he can from these eight cups and now he's on to bigger and better things. He knows that it's time to move on. So he's thankful and he has gratitude for what has been, but he's ready to move on. And a lot of feminines are feeling this way. You're feeling like, you know what? I'm ready. To, I'm just ready to move on. Like I've been through hell on this journey. I've been through enough. I feel like I've done it alone. You know, my counterpart doesn't necessarily, um, isn't necessarily there for me, doesn't necessarily understand this journey, doesn't know who I am. And so I feel like a lot of the feminines are just ready to just, you're even asking for a soulmate. You might even be asking the universe or God for that soulmate and just wanting to just put a cap or a lid on this twin flame connection. But we know that ultimately at the end of the day, this is about your union with yourself. So when you're at odds with your physical counterpart, we know that this is really telling us or signaling to us that it's time to look deeper within at, at our own shadows. There's, there's some shadow work being done right now. I don't feel like this is a full-fledged dark night of the soul, but I do feel like because of the presence of the five of cups coming out twice because of the presence of the eight of swords because of the presence of the um, eight of cups there's a lot of energy here of um, being heavy in your emotions being heavy you know heavy heart sadness longing despair um, just sort of that energy of something being over and needing to let go of something and being afraid of continuing to hold on for fear that it's going to continue to just bring you more sadness, bring you more fear, bring you more disillusionment, bring you more disappointment. And, you know, that's really, we're working with the shadows right now. We're working through the cobweb of the shadow of the mind. This would be the devil card um, in the traditional arcana. And it, there is this energy of... <laughs> We want to become friendly with suffering so that suffering doesn't become, um, you know, sort of the thing that takes over, right? So it's like a lot of times we see the devil card or we see the death card and we fear it. Um, we fear this energy. We fear the name, the devil. We fear, we fear what this is bringing into our life. But if we can really look at this and realize that this is just a part of us that we have either not been able to look at, not been able to fully immerse ourselves in for fear of what it might show us, for fear of us being quote unquote a bad person or a negative person, or maybe people wouldn't like me if I really showed them who I truly am. On the other side of this, again, is the 10 of cups. On the other side of this is this brand new beginning in the physical world, but we have to be willing and courageous enough to step forward into the darkness so that we can emerge from the darkness into the light. The Sphinx is what's representing or being represented, um, you know, in this card. You see a woman entering the Great Sphinx, right, of Giza. And the Sphinx is this great keeper of wisdom, like ancient wise, ancient wisdom. And... We know that throughout history, humans have been good and humans have been evil. And we, we know that we carry both within us and we know that it's not necessarily that one is good and one is bad. It's just that we have interpreted certain things as being bad. We've interpreted certain things as being good. So we understand that within every individual on earth is the propensity, possibility of good or evil. So it's like the devil card asks us, how have we been enslaved by our own desires or passions, right? How have we allowed them to sort of take over, take control? Um, and of course, on the superficial level, the devil card may talk about addictions, um, manipulative aspects of our behavior, dysfunctional belief systems or patterns that we may be engaging in, lower level vibrations, etc. But in reality, this is just showing us 
what is your fear of lack? What do you feel that you lack? Do you feel you're not worthy? Do you feel you're not enough? Do you feel like you're too much, right? Do you feel like you're unlovable? Do you feel like you're just, you're not supposed to be here? What is it that you feel that scares you the most? And how have you let yourself be mentally enslaved by this idea? How have you let fear take over or engulf you? And how has that affected your life? So how can you break free of these like manipulative, obsessive, thoughts that are really self-destructive let's go ahead and get a clarifier this is turning into a very interesting reading not at all the direction i thought it would go but that's okay shadow <laughs> look at that I mean, you can't make this up from the shadow from the darkness we move to the light very, very intriguing. What an interesting reading we have going on here. So, so fascinating. Um, <laughs> we have this concept of our dreams coming true, our wishes coming true, liberation, I just heard, uh, being liberated, right, from the shackles of our mind, liberated, letting go of the past. This is like really the energy of us really shedding old skin. Uh, very, very clearly, that's what's coming through. Um, this is a happy outcome. This is the happiest, highest possible outcome. The highest possible timeline is what we're being led to. But we have to believe it. We have to trust that we're going through all of this to get to the other side. You know, it's like if you're going through hell, keep going, right? We, we've gone through hell and now we are coming through on the other side of this and we're being asked to celebrate, we're being asked to trust, we're being asked to realize, look, look how close you are, but don't forget that you are light and dark and don't, don't just sort of turn away from your shadow just because you've reached the, right, this wish fulfillment, this ultimate fulfillment status. Don't just turn away from that. Remember where you came from. Remember where you're going. Remember who you are. Let's get one last card for the overarching energy of where we're moving into. Where are we moving into? Where are we moving into, Spirit? Where are we moving into? Okay. Four of Wands. Well, we know what that is. That's And this has been coming up also engagements, marriage, celebration, right? Ultimate contentment. I mean, look, you've got, I mean, you've got three of wands is pretty awesome too. Three of wands, abundance, moving into the four of wands, creating abundance on your own, creating abundance in union. 10 of cups, the sun, the sun, three of wands, four of wands, but look at what we've had to go through to get there, right? There's so many energies coming through here. Guys, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This has been a most interesting reading, not at all the direction I expected to go, but I just sort of went with it. So this is more of a star seed reading. I might label it as such. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Happy Saturday to all of you. Um, enjoy your day and I'll look forward to delivering another message to you guys very soon. And take great care guys, just take great care and let me know if you enjoyed the video by dropping a like, subscribing, we are so close to 10,000 subscribers. I'm very excited about that. I want to do something to celebrate. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, the celebration is going to be at the end of the month with Holly coming in, our medical intuitive. Um, those of you who don't know who she is, she's a dear divine feminine friend of mine, and she's extremely gifted and talented. And I just want to introduce her to all of you because she has helped me tremendously on my own journey. So I love you all. Take great care and thank you so much for being here with me.